Welcome again to the Year 6 meeting for the end of year assessment. So what are the SATs? That's the main question. So SATs is a term that people use to refer to the end of the Key Stage 2 assessment. This year it's slightly different because due to King Charles's coronation, SATs has been moved back a day. So this year it's going to be running from Tuesday the 9th of May through to Friday the 12th of May. During that week, the children are going to be sitting their SPAG paper, which is the spelling, punctuation and grammar. That is split into two papers, a reading paper, three maths papers, arithmetic and two reasoning papers. The children are used to seeing the papers. We're looking at them in school. We're unpicking them. So it won't be anything different to the children on the day, except the papers will be in colour. There's no writing paper, so the children don't sit as stats for writing, but throughout the year, the class teachers are going to be collecting evidence on the children's writing. Um, the children will have told you when they come home, we discuss their writing and they can be awarded working towards expected or greater debt, which we will discuss in more detail in a moment. Okay, so when and how are the SATs carried out? The test will take place during normal school hours under exam conditions. Children are not allowed to talk to each other from the moment their assessments are handed out until they are collected after the test has ended. Afterwards, the completed papers are sent away to be marked externally and the children result, children's results are sent back to school at some point in July. The standard timings of the test do differ, but they last no longer than 60 minutes. So the SPAG paper, which is the grammar and punctuation paper, is 15 minutes. And um, the spelling paper usually takes around 15, 15 minutes. The reading paper is 60 minutes. They have 30 minutes for arithmetic and then 40 minutes per reasoning paper. So how are the results reported? So the children will be given the following scores for the test. So they're given a raw score. That's the total number of marks that they've achieved on the paper. That will then be converted into a scale score, which I'll explain to you in a moment. And then from there, a judgment will be made whether the national standard has been met. So after marking each test, the external markers will convert each raw score into a scaled score to show whether each child is working below year six expected, above or at the expected standard. When a scaled score is given, it is given in the range of 80 to 120, and that's the same every year. A scaled score of 100 or more means that the child is meeting the national standard. There are no separate tests for your higher achieving pupils. However, a scaled score close to 120 would show that a child is working above the national standard. In the past, with it's always been 100 plus is expected and 110 plus is greater debt, but it may change slightly this year but that is roughly the numbers that we're looking at. Okay, so looking at each individual paper then, grammar, punctuation and spelling is made up of two papers. Paper one is the longer paper, lasting around 45 minutes. Children will be tested on the grammar and punctuation and spelling generally. Paper two is a shorter paper, lasting 15 minutes, where children will be tested on spelling only. They're asked to fill in a blank within a sentence, attempting to spell out the spelling word in the context correctly. So breaking it down further, paper one is your grammar paper and it lasts 45 minutes. The children will be prepared by us so that they're equipped with a good knowledge of the technical vocabulary needed to identify and describe various aspects of grammar and punctuation. Um, in year six, we tend to focus on the following areas. So your grammatical terms and your word classes, functions of sentences, combining words, phrases and clauses, verb forms, tenses and consistency, 
punctuation, vocabulary, and your standard English and formality. The children are tested on everything that they have been taught throughout Key Stage 2. Obviously, in Year 6, we revise everything, go back over everything, but it, they could be asked anything that they've been taught within grammar from Year 3 upwards. Okay, so um, just to go through what these slides are then, these slides have got, again, you'll be sent a copy of this PowerPoint, um, but these slides have just got example questions um, of what the children have been asked, just so that you're aware um, of the question types. Okay, so the reading assessment, the assessment has been designed to measure whether children's comprehension of age appropriate reading material meets the national standard. It's a standard timing of 60 minutes, including reading the text and answering questions. There are three different set texts for the children to read, which could be any combination of non-fiction, fiction, and or poetry. And the reading paper focuses on the following areas known as content domains. So they will be asked to give the meaning of words in context. They will be asked to retrieve and record information and identify key details from fiction and non-fiction texts, summarise main ideas, they'll be asked to make inferences, to predict what might happen, identify and explain how information is related and contributes to the meaning of the text as a whole, identify and explain how meaning is enhanced through choice of words and phrases from the author, um, and make comparisons within the text. Okay, I know that all sounds very scary indeed, but honestly, don't worry. Part of our English lesson every single day, the children are being asked comprehension questions, whether orally or written in their books. The children are used to having to find information that's hidden within a text. So when we read it out to you, as we have done, it does seem very scary, but the children are so used to doing this daily that they really, they don't bat an eyelid at it. So here are some examples from past reading papers. I'm not going to go through them all with you. You could look through these later on. Um, as Miss Jennings has said, there's a mixture of inference, deduction, straightforward retrieval from the text. Okay, so since the current testing format for the year six SATs began in 2016, there's been a tendency for the number of marks to go in favour towards three particular types of texts, uh, of content domain questions, sorry. So, for example, in 2017, 20% of the marks could be gained by answering questions where children had to give or explain the meaning of words in context. Um, over a quarter of the marks could be gained by answering questions where children had to retrieve and record information but almost half of the marks were allotted to questions requiring children to make an inference from a text, justifying the inference with text evidence. Um, as Ms. Tattersall, Ms. Tattersall has said, we are doing that daily in English lessons. The children are used to that. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when reading with your child at home, try asking questions like, find a word in this paragraph that is the closest in meaning to, and then give them a word, for example, annoyed. Um, in what year did, and then provide a fact, for example, the French authorities make it illegal for people to swim from France to England. In the last paragraph, X does not want to Y, give two reasons why X does not want to Y, and ask them to pull out the information. Paper that... If you're looking at past papers at home with your children or you've got any kind of revision material, with the reading, some of the questions that children fall down on year after year after year are the sort of questions that say, find and copy one word or find and copy a short phrase. So if it says find and copy one word, the children can only write one word on the line so many children are losing marks because they try and write out maybe the sentence or part of the sentence. So it's just something to be aware of when the children are doing the revision. Okay, so maths, as I've said, are split into three papers. Your first paper is arithmetic. 
Arithmetic is a 30 minute paper and it's worth a total of 40 marks. We've been doing a lot of work on arithmetic in school. The children are confident with their arithmetic and the higher they can score in arithmetic, it makes it easier for the children on the reasoning paper. We do tell them that the magic number is 35. If they can get 35 out of 40, they are comfortable going into the reasoning papers. The arithmetic covers the four main number operations. So your division, multiplication, addition, subtraction, and then your mixed operation calculations that require BIDMAS. Um, the children are aware of BIDMAS. So basically, BIDMAS is giving you the order in which to solve a calculation. So you've got brackets, indices, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. So if, if it's a mixed question, they know the order to solve it, as well as number properties, calculating percentages of amounts, calculations using decimals, and calculations using fractions. Below are just a couple of examples of the arithmetic paper. Okay, so papers two and three are the reasoning papers. Both of these are 40 minutes and they're worth 35 marks each. Paper two requires the children to demonstrate their mathematical knowledge and skills as well as their ability to solve problems and their mathematical reasoning. Within school this year, as well as arithmetic, we are really focusing on the children's reasoning ability. Um, every day for 10, 15 minutes, the children are doing reasoning questions and we're asking the children to explain how they've got their answer. So their mathematical reasoning is becoming more natural to them. The questions on the reasoning paper focus on the following topic areas. So number and place value, including Roman numerals, addition, subtraction, multiplication and division calculations. Geometry, so you've got your shape, position and direction. Statistics, measurements, which includes length, perimeter, math, volume, time and money. Algebra, ratio and proportion, fractions, decimals and percentages. One of the things the children do need to know for the reasoning paper is to be able to convert, for example, millimetres into metres, um, litres, millilitres into litres etc. Again, here are just a few SATS questions to give you an example of the reasoning papers. Okay, so how can you support your children preparing for the SATS then? Firstly, a positive attitude goes a long way. So as much as encouragement and support as possible, um, but we don't need to tell you that. Um, so give your child opportunities to go outside and avoid or the use of screens. This can apply to leisure pursuits as well as how they study. Encourage your child to talk to their teacher or another adult they trust if they express persistent anxieties about SATs. Remember that a small amount of anxiety is normal and not harmful. If your child is unwilling to talk to their teacher, talk to them yourself. Um, I'm sure all the children are willing to come and talk to us. Um, plan something nice and fun for the weekends before and after SATs. This will help your children start the week well and also give them something to look forward to. Ensure that your child is eating and drinking well and getting a suitable amount of sleep. Keep it light, practice key skills like times tables and practice mental maths in the real world scenarios. For example, adding up prices in shops, working out discount deals and asking questions like if there are 1,300 grams of flour in this pack, what is that in kilograms? Giving them the opportunities in everyday experiences to um, practice those conversions. OK, so SATs focus on what they know about in math and English. They don't reflect how talented the children are at science, geography, art, PE. And they certainly won't highlight positive personal characteristics such as kindness and integrity. 
such results don't always tell the whole story. The results will say they did or didn't meet a certain standard, but not necessarily by what margin. Additionally, the thresholds tend to change each year according to overall national performance. So what was classed as did meet the expected standard in 2016 may have been considered it did not in 2015. Your school may be able to provide you with more detailed feedback, so don't let your child see SATs as a simple case of pass or fail. SATs last for one week. In reality, it's just one or two papers lasting 30 to 60 minutes each day. You can't emphasise enough the importance of keeping that in perspective. So what should you do if you're worried about your child? So it, it would be unnatural for SATs not to induce a certain degree of worry or anxiety. But there is, of course, a tipping point. SATs should not affect a child's appetite. They should not affect the child's ability to sleep, alter the personality in any way. They shouldn't induce any sort of panic, tears, or disengagement from lessons, or be a reason not to attend school. If any of the above, any of the above are evident, then SATs may be causing an excessive degree of anxiety and your child may benefit from additional support. An 11-year-old child to cope with the situation and be stronger in it. We are currently doing lots of intervention for the children. So if the children are feeling any sort of worry, they, will, they do come and speak to us and then we'll put them in an intervention and try and reassure them. But as Ms Jennings said, this is one week out of their school life and SATs, well, they don't show if you're a good artist, they don't show what you like as a person and the children really do need to remember that. Okay, so steps to take if you are worried about your child. Um, come and talk to us. If the child is showing the same symptoms at school as they are at home, is there anything else going on at home which may be contributing to your child's overall level of stress? Work with the school so that everyone concerned can be offering the support that's needed. It's really important for the children to know that we do work together in partnership, both in school and at home. Um, spend time with your child. Try to understand what aspects of SATs concerns them the most. Is it the worry of failing? Is it the worry of getting stuck on a paper? If your child can pinpoint what's bothering them the most, we can then take specific steps to help reassure them and um, try not to project your own anxieties or views on the SATs. If you don't believe in SATs or do not think your child should be doing them, then neither will they. Um, confront any media coverage, so show clippings if there's been anything negative and ask them to talk about what they've, what they've seen and how they feel. Reinforce the reality, so again, just reinforcing the fact that it is only one week out of their school life and it only assesses their ability in math and English. Okay, so advice for year six children. Listen to what your teacher says. We've been through the SATs ourselves. We know how they're feeling and we'll do everything we can to make it as easy as possible for them. Remember that we are cheering them on. We want you to do your best and to show how wonderful you are. Make sure that you get plenty of sleep and stay well fed. Sleep and food help keep the brain moving. Remind the children that avoid making any silly mistakes. The children mustn't worry if there's something that they can't answer. Take a deep breath, move on, go back to it later if you've got time. But always remember, if you do have time at the end, it's better to have a guess and write something than nothing at all. And as we've said a couple of times, SATs is just one week out of your entire life. So, so a year seven pupils advice, stay focused in class so you don't have loads of extra study at home. Yeah. Okay. Um, just before we finish, the, we started last week, last year, thinking, uh, uh, sorry, not thinking, but doing a SATS breakfast for the children during SATS week. The idea of this is that all the children will be in school for quarter past eight. They will be given a good healthy breakfast. So last year we had croissants, pan au chocolat, 
we had uh, fruit toast, juice. It gives the children the chance to be in school, to feel calm, to chat with the friends. If they've got any last minute nerves, they can speak to the staff. We just found that the children were a lot more relaxed with coming in that little bit earlier. The staff stay with the children. We then walk them back. I'm really sorry about that. We keep losing sound. So I was just saying before we finish that we're going to be holding a fat breakfast in fat week. The children will need to be at school for quarter past eight. We take them over to the dining hall. The children are given a healthy breakfast last year. It was croissants, fruit toast, pan au chocolat, fruit juice. It gives the children a chance to chat to the friends before the test. If they want to ask us any last minute questions, we're there. Some children last year chose to use the time for revision. I wouldn't really recommend that, but it's completely up to the child. Nearer to the time, you will be given um, a letter and you just have to sign to say whether you would like your child to attend the breakfast. I highly recommend that every child does attend because it ticks two boxes. One, we know that all the children are in school ready for the test. The children can relax, they can have a game of football when they've had the breakfast, just to take their mind off the test. Then the very final thing, the, to help your children at home, We've set up in Google Classroom, there's a new area called SATS Revision 2023. I've invited every child from both year six classes to it. There's so many different resources in there. There's games to play, there's quizzes, there's past SAT papers. So if you've not already accepted, if you could please have a look in there and accept, then the children can start accessing it. Um, as far as practicing for the SATs, could I please say that if the children are starting to do revision at home, please can they do maybe 20 minutes at night? I really, they shouldn't be doing much more than that because it, it will be getting too much for them. So just short, sharp bursts of revision at this point of the year. Obviously more as we get into May, but just short, sharp bursts at the minute. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, as Ms. Jennings said, if you want to just type them into the box. But thank you for listening. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you.